Hey what up boys, today's video is a homage. A homage to all our beloved characters who were unjustly killed off due to poor writing, lack of vision and terrible, terrible virtue signalling from today's MMO story writers. The death of a major character within the lore should be a harrowing and meaningful turning point for the direction that the franchise is taking, be it the death of an evil character steering the game in a direction of new beginnings and fresh starts, or the death of a character very dear to us, setting the scene for things to come in the game's dark future. I want to exclude our antagonists for this video because the point of dungeons and raids within an MMO are to go after these guys anyway. I'm mainly focusing on the death of our allies. Over the years I've witnessed many characters get taken from us, some very meaningful, really making me feel something emotional. I even cried for a couple and some not so much. We'll be taking a look back at these important characters, the events that preceded their deaths and deciding if their death and essentially the removal from the story going forward was really worth it. So sit back, relax, and if you feel like any of your favorite lore characters were killed off unjustly, you could even give this video a like. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? I'm going to start today's video off with a fairly minor case of the Blizzard oopsies. World of Warcraft has handled the death of their evil and good characters fairly well, with the exception of a few, and it's them few that I want to focus on today. Garrosh Hellscream was a young orc warrior who was thrust into a position of power at the will of Warcraft Jesus himself, Thrall. Garrosh was put through many, many trials in his short term, being made to lead the Horde into a new age, all whilst being sabotaged from the shadows by a dark force unseen to the common eye. This manipulation led to Garrosh becoming twisted, deranged, racist, and lusting for more and more power until eventually being captured at the hands of the combined forces of the Horde and the Alliance, a whole expansion later. This narrative was not only unjust towards the young orc, but leading into the expansion that shall not be named, Garrosh was put on the back burner when really the whole early part of this expansion should have been focused around him entirely. He was the one who brought about this expansion after all. This is when Blizzard's storytelling really started to… Uh, you know. You want meaningful and in-depth explanations to storylines with lore scattered around the world explaining niche things like we've been given for the last 10 years? <laughs> Good luck with that because… Times change. Blizzard's decision to make the conclusion of Garrosh more of a subplot was not a wise choice in my opinion. He was pushed aside to make way for these new warlords of Draenor. Oh shit, I said it, sorry. So what went wrong then? Why did Blizzard choose to kill off Garrosh in the most mundane way possible? Personally, I think the reason Blizzard decided to do this was because of the backlash that the community were giving Blizzard for shoving him down our throats for two whole expansions. In Cataclysm, he was shown to be a strict but honourable leader, showing off many signs of his loyalty to the Horde through a lot of questlines. Sure, he was a bit hot-headed, but when it really mattered, he pulled himself together and showed how a leader must lead. The ending of the you are dismissed quest chain in Stone Talon Mountains is one that stands out in my mind specifically as a display of Garrosh's honourable leadership. Following Cataclysm came Mists of Pandaria, which was where Blizzard really started to lose their grip on Garrosh's story. They turned him into a young, hot-headed but still very competent leader into a bumbling oh me orc me angry and a tyrant of a warlord who was completely racist to anyone who wasn't an orc. I get that this is likely how they wanted Garrosh to play out, but the way they executed it through the expansion story was laughable. Blizzard used media outside of the game's context, like books, comics and YouTube videos, to explain how some of this downfall happened when it all should exist in game. It feels like between the defeat of Deathwing and the discovery of Pandaria, Garrosh went from honourable leader to bumbling idiot. They try to explain it using the gimmick that exists within the land of Pandaria but seems pretty shallow to me Blizz. 
Oh wait, you're nothing but shallow nowadays, so this was probably some foreshadowing of what's to come. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the death of a character should be a turning point for an expansion. Killing off a major lore character should not happen randomly in the middle of some quest chain like it did with Garrosh. And Blizzard probably realised they messed up with Garrosh as they did use the death of this next character as a meaningful turning point in the Warcraft storyline. In the opening sequence of Legion, Varian Rin, the King of Stormwind, father to Anduin and righteous leader of the Alliance was struck down in his prime as a result of him saving his whole fleet from destruction. Varian meant a lot to not only a lot of in-game characters, but also us, the player. His death was at the hands of another major character, Gul'dan, and helped fuel our hatred for him to motivate us to take him down. All in all, they handled Varian Rin's death in a very good way. The cogs of the story felt like they were well thought out, motivating us, the player, the characters in-game, making way for Anduin's rise, and triggering some serious events that eventually led to the defeat of the Legion at the end of, well, Legion. So how was this story different to Garrosh? It's the timing, of course. Having this event happen at the start of an expansion really set the tone for it, making it a lot more dark and serious. Like, you think to yourself, holy shit, one of the biggest characters just got killed by what we're up against here. The weight of that alone is enough to carry any weak-ass storylines that follow. Blizzard really learned a lot from the way they handled Garrosh and applied it to Varian with some of the highest quality storytelling Warcraft has created since Wrath of the Lich King. It can only get better from here, right? Wrong. Leading into Shadowlands, they basically took the Garrosh racist warlord story, the Gul'dan kills Varian story, smushed it together and used it as a scapegoat to motivate us, the player, to hate Sylvanas in World of Warcraft's current expansion, Shadowlands. Come on, Blizz. I know you like to reuse your old content, but this is a bit much, isn't it? What a joker. <laughs> The problem with Warcraft's storylines nowadays is that they just last way too long and are not compelling enough to keep us interested for years at a time. You release them beautiful cinematics of Saurfang just to basically create the exact same story again. Everyone loves Saurfang and I get it, the dude's old and has been through a lot, but he meant more to the community than Sylvanas ever did. But hey, don't get me wrong, we all love Sylvanas in a different way. Mainly because she's thick. But bros before hoes, man, it's a simple concept. The whole story just reeks of bad writing, using a character's death to create a false sense of connection between the story and the player because they cared about the particular character that died. I don't care how powerful Sylvanas claims she is now with the Jailer's power. All I'm gonna say is, Saurfang and Chuck Norris got into a fight once. Well, who was chilling in Orgrimmar for 15 years before Sylvanas came along. Arena Net, where have you put it? It's time for Guild Wars 2's Daily Beating. A company that really fucked up basically all the deaths of their major characters was Arena Net's Guild Wars 2. Just in the base game's main story alone, we had three mentor characters die, and the setup for this is a laughable four or five in game story missions. Hardly any time at all to get to know the characters. However, I do want to give an honorary mention to Tybalt Leftpaw, as out of these three, he's the one who really stands out the most, and his adorable obsession with apples gave him enough character for the Guild Wars 2 community to really care about him. The problem was though, we were just never given enough time to get to know these mentors. Guild Wars 2 really started killing off their characters early on, completely ruining any sense of impact that the deaths of these characters have on us. Right off the launch of their first expansion, ArenaNet killed off one of their major lore characters in the middle of a fleeting cutscene which had no impact on us at all all because it happened too fast. The writers must have been binge watching Game of Thrones at the time of writing this because it didn't stop there. If we fast forward to the end of the next expansion story, we lose a major dragon ally, the leader of the largest united army on the planet, a god, and they were even high enough on copium to kill 
us, the main character. How about that for a unique story beat? Spoiler, it was garbage. It really felt like ArenaNet tried to use death as a way to force the player to feel something when in reality, it just made us completely numb to it. The final straw for me was the death of a character who had been an important part of the Guild Wars lore for over 50 years. His story started in the first game and carried over to Guild Wars 2. They clearly had plans for him and, I fear because of reasons that I discussed in the last video, they had to cut his story short. And by god, it was criminal the way they did it. The whole scene was beautiful and really shows you how terrifying he is as a character. I'll let the scene play out here. Everyone will flock to my embrace. They will all love me, Palawa, Ignatius. Palawa Joko is by far one of the most interesting characters to ever exist in an MMO. He's an immortal lich who teases his knowledge of the Elder Dragons constantly through the story. He has enslaved countless undeads with his unknown amount of powers. And we were even forced to create an uneasy alliance with him in the first game because we just could not overpower him even if we tried. He was truly a force that could fight toe to toe with an Elder Dragon. And his conclusion was this. <laughs> After being invested in Guild Wars 2 for so long and having them betray us like this was truly heartbreaking. But wait! There's more! Now, I don't cry very often, especially for a game that's not World of Warcraft. Look on a mask of my boy. But as we discussed in the previous video, which is linked up here in the top corner, we introduced, grew up, and fought alongside this dragon here, Orin. We had this dragon by our side for a very long time, over four years. I admit, I was deeply invested in this dragon, even though she stole the spotlight from us as the main character. And to be honest, this whole video has been leading up to this point, the death of Orin. The setup for this was beautiful. ArenaNet finally made us feel something towards one of their characters' deaths. Granted, it took them four years to get it right, but they got it right perfectly. I genuinely cried my heart out when I saw Aurene strung up like this, just as she predicted would happen. But she went along with the plan anyway, knowing this would happen. It was truly beautiful. But then they fucked it up. ArenaNet did something that I think is a disgusting thing to do to your player base. They killed off a character just to bring them back to life at a later date. Falsely playing with the emotional attachment you have to a character. Now, you might think I'm overreacting about this, but allow me to show you how it happened and how you would see it in game now if you played the game today. A few moments later. My champion. So, what was the point of this video then? Why is an Ashes of Creation channel talking about the death of characters in other MMOs? Well, I don't know really. I just wanted to rant about the death of Aurene if I'm honest. But I got one thing to say to Intrepid if they ever decide to use death in their storyline. Don't kill someone and bring them back to life five minutes later. It's shit storytelling. And that's pretty much all I got for today's video. I'm going to be testing Ashes over the next three days hardcore style. So that means no sleep, eating junk and drinking copious amounts of caffeine. So if I don't upload anymore, it's because the game was so good, I literally forgot to look after myself and died. No, I'm kidding. I'll probably upload the next video in roughly three days after this one on the Monday. 
I want to thank the guys who commented on the last video. You're the best, and I appreciate you a lot. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.